Hello, I'm Maxime Declou, intern in working in the Network Business Division. And today with Patricio Martello, Director of Solution Architecture, we are excited to demonstrate the power of our new Ansible collection, which will make your daily network automation more efficient and hassle-free. So firstly, let me outline the agenda for today's session. Patricio will do a brief of overview of Ansible, covering its fundamentals. Then I'll take over with a demonstration of Ansible in action, configuring an highly omni-switch from interfaces to OSPF configuration. And finally, I will conclude with some key takeaways. So now, over to you, Patricio. Thanks, Maxime. Let's do a brief introduction about Ansible itself. Ansible is a software tool to automate provisioning and configuration tasks across multiple hosts. Let's delve into its capabilities. Ansible streamlines the process of provisioning resources, making it seamless and efficient. So, whether you're deploying applications, setting up servers, or managing infrastructure, Ansible simplifies the entire workflow. Its value is that you can define the desired state of your systems using simple YAML files and let Ansible handle the rest. This eliminates manual configuration errors and inconsistencies. Whether it's routers, switches, or firewalls, Ansible treats network devices as just a special type of host. This approach streamlines network automation and ensures consistency across your infrastructure. Ansible scales effortlessly, allowing you to manage thousands of hosts. One of its big strengths is that it is agentless and does not require installation of any agent or plugin on the host or, in our case, on the network device. To sum up, you can use Ansible to automate provisioning, configuration, and network management tasks effectively. At the bottom of the screen, I added a link to another video in which we covered Ansible in more detail and more specifically, how to combine it with Napalm to automate a multi-vendor network environment. So if you haven't watched that one already, you may want to check it out before you proceed with this one. What is an Ansible collection? An Ansible collection is a standardized way to bundle and distribute Ansible content, including playbooks, roles, modules, plugins, documentation, and tests. Collections make it easier for Ansible users to organize and share their automation content in a modular, reusable, and consistent way. What are the key features? First, modular packaging. Collections package all relevant resources in a single namespace, making them easier to maintain and use. Second, distribution and installation. Collections are typically distributed via Ansible Galaxy for community content or Automation Hub for Red Hat certified content, and they can be installed with the Ansible Galaxy CLI tool. Third, scalability. By using collections, developers and teams can avoid monolithic playbooks and instead share, reuse, and manage content across different projects or environments in a scalable manner. This structure ensures better organization and portability of Ansible automation content. Now, Maxime will demonstrate how you can use and access the OmniSwitch AOS Ansible collection. Maxime, over to you. Thank you, Patricio, and let's move on to the demonstration. So just before starting, here is the configuration we'll do for this demo. Uh, we are going to use our Ansible collection called Alcatel.RS8 and we are going to configure one of our switch. We'll start by configuring VLANs. Next, we are going to configure the layer two switch interfaces and then assigning them the appropriate VLANs. Uh, following that, we're going to configure layer three interfaces by assigning IP addresses to the VLAN interfaces. And then we are going to demonstrate how easy it is to handle static routes by just adding a static route to the configuration and then delete it right away. Like this, we can see uh, how easy it is to just manage the change you want to do by changing uh, the state of the playbook. And then uh, we're going to finally uh, end on uh, the demonstration of how to configure OSPF. So through all this demo, you'll see how Ansible can streamline and simplify switch configuration and make your network management more efficient and less error prone. So now let's get started on our demo. So as you can see, my screen is divided in two shells. On the left, we have the shell that will allow us to apply the different command. And on the right, we have the SSH connection to my switch, which will allow us to see the configuration updates thanks to the Ansible playbooks. So today we are going to use this command to apply the different Ansible playbooks. 
Uh, it took all uh, two files in my local directory. First, we have the ID inventory, which contains the different informations about the target. And next, we have the ilipushconf.yaml, which is the file that contains the Ansible playbook. So let's take a look at the Ansible uh, inventory. And as you can see, uh, there is the IP for the host and the username and password for the uh, SSH connection to the target host. So now let's do the same with the push conf file. And as you can see, it is empty, which is normal because uh, we are just going to paste the different playbooks uh, in function of the module we want to uh, input uh, in Ansible. So we are going to start with the uh, configuration of the VLANs. So we can see that on the switch, there is already a set of VLANs configured. And let's say we want to configure two more VLANs, the 99 and the 33. So I paste this playbook to apply new VLANs, where I describe the uh, VLAN ID uh, for each switch, uh, each VLAN, and then the name and the admin state. So we just need to uh, save the change on the push conf file. And uh, we can play uh, and run the, the command for the playbook. And if you use it, you'll see that uh, the command or the shell will freeze. It is usually a good sign because uh, a write memory is being performed. So for the rest of the video, I'm just going to cut the loading part, but it can take yeah, about two minutes to perform. And so if I check the VLANs now, before uh, the command is applied on the left, we can see that the new VLANs have been created because uh, they've been applied before the write memory. So after the Ansible module has been played, uh, we have the play recap with the value OK equal 2 and change equal 1, and the rest set to 0, which is good because it means that there is no errors. So for next, we are going for layer two interface. For that, we need to, uh, of course, delete the previous playbook in the push file. And I'm just going to look for the next uh, playbook for layer two interfaces. So this time the playbook described four variables such as VLAN ID or port type. Um, the port type variable allows us to describe a single port with the value port, but we could also use link ag value for LACP link aggregation, for example. And just before applying our playbook, uh, just remember that we associate here uh, in this playbook uh, the VLAN 33 with port 27 and the VLAN 99 with the port 28. And also, uh, please note that each time you only need to focus on the variable under the config section, and the rest must be unchanged, either it's going to break and may crash the Ansible module. So we can run the command after saving the change on the push file. And again, there are no errors on the playbook uh, Ansible uh, uh, command. And we can see that the two VLAN have been associated with the right port that we described just before, the 27 with the VLAN 33 and the 28 with the VLAN 99. So next, we move on on the configuration of layer 3 interfaces. So we do the same. We uh, delete the previous uh, playbook and just paste, paste the uh, next for layer three interface. So
So this time, uh, the playbook describes the name, the IP address, uh, the, the mask, and the port ID, which uh, correspond to the desired port number to ZP associated with. So again, we, we save this change and uh, we can run the command. And great, it applied correctly without any errors again. So let's check on the configuration again, if it uh, has well been working well. And yes, we can see that there is two new uh, IP interface with uh, VLAN 99 and VLAN uh, 33. So I think you're starting to understand. Um, it will be the same exercise each time. The main difficulty for you as a user will be just to understand which value correspond to each variable in each playbook. However, most modules are self-explanatory as you, you see with the name of the variables. But uh, if you encounter any difficulties, uh, there is lots of documentation available uh, in the different collections. So now uh, let's configure a static root. Um, but since I don't want to, the new root to affect my SSH connection, I will just use uh, an IP address that makes no sense and will be not used in a real case. But we'll just see how it uh, applies correctly uh, on the IP routing table. So again, I delete the previous playbook. So here we have the static root playbook where you describe the network address that we want to reach. In our example, it's 222.0. Then we have the forward router address, which is here in this example, 10111. And after that, we have the variable called description which is uh, which stands for the name you want to give in your root in the routing table. And after that, we have finally the admin distance, uh, which stands for the metric in the switch static root command. So we just check, like we're gonna see that there is no such root uh, in the configuration yet. And yes, uh, you, you don't see any routes that uh, go for the destination 222.0. So let's apply the command again. And no errors. So that should mean that there is uh, the new route. And yes, as you can see, there is a new route called my route, as we described in the playbook. So, so now uh, let's just uh, delete this route, but not via the switch CLI, but uh, using uh, the state of the, the playbook. So now it's merged for adding a configuration, but we just put it for deleted. So it will delete the specified route from the configuration and so without having to know uh, the exact syntax. So the playbook applied and now let's check the configuration. And yes, there is a, the route is deleted. So yeah, we didn't use uh, the switch and we just only use this one. So now uh, to conclude, uh, let's just add uh, an OSPF configuration to the switch. And again, uh, we make sure to remove the previous uh, playbook from the Ailey push conf. So here is our OSPF playbook. And uh, so we just need to declare its area ID and then its interface by its name, intervil interface VLAN 33 and its admin state for our VLAN 33.
And you can see on the right, uh, there, there is no OSPF configuration for now. Okay, so success, we now have uh, OSPF configuration on our switch. switch. Let's uh, check it on the right. And yes, the OSPF configuration we described in the playbook is applied correctly as uh, all the, the other configuration we've done with Ansible. So to conclude uh, this demonstration, we were able to, demo to perform all this configuration using uh, our Ansible collection without knowing the exact common syntax. Uh, this demonstrates the power and simplicity of network automation with Ansible. While uh, we demonstrated this task on a single device, uh, you could also specify multiple devices in the inventory file and perform uh, mass provisioning, of course, uh, enabling you to uh, scale your operation efficiently. So uh, we hope uh, this demonstration helped you to understand how to use the collection. And I hope it opened your eyes on the wide range of configuration we can achieve now with this Ansible collection for Alcatel. And, um, so thank you very much for watching uh, this section and happy automating. So now we've finished the configuration. Let's take a look at our GitHub repository containing our Ansible collection. So our collection provides all the key files and organized structures that facilitate the use of each module. You will be able to find detailed documentations and playbooks to help you get started quickly. As we saw before, you can adapt this playbooks example to your convenience. There's no issue. So you can find this collection on our GitHub following the link shown on the screen, but we're also excited to announce that this collection will be available on Ansible Galaxy. But what's Ansible Galaxy? Ansible Galaxy is simply a hub where you can find, share, and reuse Ansible collections. It is a central repository for sharing and discovering about Ansible in general. But we also believe in the power of community and open source collaboration. That's why we are open to new implementations and improvement from anyone here to participate in the IED community. Your contribution, feedback, and collaboration are highly valued, whether you have a new feature to add, a bug to report, or just want to provide the feedback. We welcome your participation. So, if you wish to incorporate any changes, you can use the git merge command. This command initiates a merge request, which will then be reviewed and be either accepted or rejected. And please note that this collection is an open source project and not officially supported by our teams. But we are committed to maintaining these playbooks and sharing future enhancements with you. And by leveraging this collection, we hope to foster a collaborative environment where shared and knowledge and continuous improvement drive network automation. This brings us to the end of this session. Let's wrap up with some key takeaways. Our Ansible modules will make the operation of your network quicker and more efficient. Thanks to automation and predefined templates, you can eliminate human errors in network configuration, allowing you unified and precise management over your network. And these are just some of the benefits. We hope you enjoyed this session and we invite you to try it on your own and follow the next Space Worker videos because there is even more coming soon. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.